build resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. This is the challenge posed by SDG 9. Innovation and technological progress are key to finding lasting solutions to both economic and environmental challenges, such as increased resource and energy efficiency. Globally, investments in research and development as a proportion of GDP has increased from 1.5% in 2000 to 1.7% in 2015. But it has remained unchanged since then. And for developing regions, it was even less than 1%. The coronavirus pandemic has revealed the urgent need for resilient infrastructure. The pandemic is hitting manufacturing industries hard and it's causing disruptions in the global value chain and the supply of products. Can we make infrastructure resilient to global or regional disasters and even climate change? And how are we so far in trying to achieve this? Hello, science fans! My name is Chona, and I'm your resident Filipino scientist. Join us in today's episode where we talk about Sustainable Development Goal 9 industry, innovation, and infrastructure. One key aspect of innovation and infrastructure is connectivity. And in 2018, 96% of the world's population lived within reach of a mobile cellular signal. But at the moment, 16% of the global population do not have access to mobile broadband networks, which limits their ability to ask for help when needed learn about world events, and acquire information that is otherwise freely available to anyone who can access it. The global share of manufacturing value added in GDP increased from 15.2% in 2005 to 16.3% in 2017, driven by the fast growth of manufacturing in Asia. And the least developed nations have shown immense potential for the food and beverage industry or the agro-industry and in textiles and garments, which indicate high possibilities for continued employment generation as well as productivity. In 2019, the amount of new renewable power capacity added was the highest ever at 184 gigawatts, which is 20 gigawatts more than in 2018. Interestingly, Developing countries continue to outpace developed countries in investments in green technology. In 2019, for example, they committed $152.2 billion to green tech, compared to the $130 billion from developed nations. These are generally very optimistic trends at a global perspective. But what about the Philippines? For connectivity, based on UCLA's July 2021 assessments, the Philippines currently has a mobile broadband internet download speed of 33.69 megabits per second and an upload speed of 8.83 Mbps with 31 milliseconds of latency. Compared to results from two years ago, where the Philippines was ranked at the 114th place in July 2020 for internet speeds, we've actually gone up 45 ranks since last June 2021. Manufacturing compromises more than half of the Philippines' industrial sector and accounts for almost a quarter of the country's GDP. Preliminary results from the Philippine Statistics Authority showed that the volume of production index was surging at 453.1% last June 2021, which was a positive reversal of the 80.6% decline that was observed in the previous year. To achieve sustainable innovation, industrial growth, and infrastructure, SDG 9 has several key indicators. And in this video, we will focus on how the Philippines has tried to address these challenges. The first challenge is to develop quality, reliable, sustainable, and resilient infrastructure to support economic development and human well-being with a focus on affordable and equitable access for all. The Build, Build, Build program is an ambitious infrastructure development plan that is composed of thousands of projects to be implemented all over the country. However, the Build, Build, Build program 
has been beset with problems that resulted in serious delays in project completion, including lack of technology, right-of-way acquisition problems, poor project preparation, and identification and procurement problems. A lot of these are not new problems to Philippine systems, but the COVID-19 pandemic has made it worse by creating fiscal pressures in the finding of funds to continue these projects and to allow them to be completed on time, while also figuring out how to fund the more urgent COVID-19 responses. Other than improving on the actual provision of infrastructure, government should support and implement policy reforms that would ensure a conducive environment for both public and private investments in the infrastructure sector, especially in the post-pandemic era. Critical to these reforms are the enactment of the following. The Public-Private Partnership Act, the National Transport Policy, the Amendments to the Right-of-Way Law, and the Sustainable Transportation Act. Another challenge issued by SDG 9 is to promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and significantly raise industry's share of employment and gross domestic product. The Philippines' unemployment rate rose to 8.9% last September 2021. And this was despite efforts from the government to ease restrictions, even though the COVID-19 cases were still rising. One of the active projects to address this immediate need is the Assistance to Youth and Unemployed for Development and Advancement, or AYUDA program of the Department of Public Works and Highways. AYUDA was launched by hiring unemployed youth and our kababayans who lost their jobs during the pandemic. And this was in order for the government to provide jobs for people while also contribute to the infrastructure development of the country. So far, AYUDA has given jobs to 900 individuals, which is a relatively microscopic dent to the estimated 4.5 million Filipinos without jobs. Another aspect of SDG 9 is to increase the access of small-scale industrial and other enterprises to financial services, including affordable credit and their integration into value chains and markets. To help address this, the Agricultural Credit Support Program of the Land Bank of the Philippines provides loan funds to our farmers in rural areas. Documentary and legal requirements of banks can intimidate farmers and limit access to microfinancing opportunities. With the current loopholes in the financing of our agricultural sector, public and private companies and institutions are all chipping in to help invigorate the lifeblood of the Philippine economy. By digitizing rural banks and lessening the capital investments for brick-and-mortar institutions, we increase the possibilities of having more of our farmers into these formal financial systems and giving them the financial support that they need. SDG 9 also calls to nations to upgrade infrastructure and retrofit industries to make them sustainable, with increased resource use efficiency and greater adoption of clean and environmentally sound technologies and industrial processes. The Philippines' building sector is one of intensive energy use, accounting for 15 to 20 percent of the total electricity consumption of the country. The work from home set up during the pandemic would have been the best time to invest in retrofitting to make use of greener alternatives to lighting and air conditioning. But reconstruction is half the battle. The primary sources of energy in the Philippines must also evolve in order for us to achieve sustainability. And finally, SDG 9 calls upon us to enhance scientific research, upgrade the technological capabilities of industrial sectors by encouraging innovation, and substantially increasing the number of research and development workers and increasing public and private research and development spending. Again, we need more scientists in the Philippines and we actually need to increase spending in the field of STEM. Did you know that the Department of Science and Technology will get a budget of 24.268 billion pesos this year, allowing an increase for eight of its 18 attached agencies? Now, 
that budget is lower by 919.8 million pesos compared to 2021. But it's still a lot of opportunities. So, what are our other issues in terms of STEM here in the Philippines? The problems we encounter are systemic and societal. Our mobility and purchasing powers are limited by systems put in place to avoid corruption and misspending of funds. And though a lot of these were set up with the best intentions, a lot of the regulations for procurement and for financing are being implemented without listening to the unique needs of researchers in terms of purchasing of equipment, field events, and other purchases. And while we face battle upon battle to start and fund our processes, we also exist in a country that does not trust and does not appreciate its scientists. We have cultivated a culture who prefers fast and shallow information delivered through social media. And though we have a lot of amazing scientists here in the Philippines, very few have the time, the energy, or the training to be able to communicate better with the general public. And so here we are, trying to figure out how we can make the Filipino people fall in love with science and technology so we can move forward towards sustainable innovations and a better life for all. And so science has spoken and science is pleading to be heard. And as scientists, we are trying harder to communicate better, to be humbler and to learn more from other people. But I hope in order for us to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, I hope the Filipino people can also try and listen. But what do you think? What science innovations are needed in order to help achieve SDG 9? How can scientists and engineers collaborate with other sectors of society in order for us to create sustainable infrastructure? Please share your thoughts and ideas in the comments section below. And to keep updated with the latest videos from Sciencia, please follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. Check out my own personal feed also at shauna.abiledo. Thank you so much for joining us in the sustainability episode. And I hope to see you around!